Welcome back again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, ask yourself the question, why are so many, the vast majority, in fact, of British title fights either very good or classics? Well, the simple answer is the matchmaking. They're usually evenly matched contests. Usually, not always, but, you know, more often than not. And you can add to the you know, enormous history of fantastic British fights. You can add um, Nathan Heaney and Brad Pauls, their contest, uh, which topped the Magnificent Seven right again, Queensbury promotion uh, over in uh, Birmingham. Um, I mean, what a fantastic contest. Yeah, it was gruelling. Would I call it a classic? Probably not. Probably not considering the high standard of British title fights, because it was one of those gruelling fights that sort of became a classic. It became very good. Um, it ended in a draw, which meant Heaney retained his British middleweight title. It was a split draw, actually. One went for, one judge went for Pauls, Brad Pauls. One went for Nathan Heaney. One had it a draw. I had it 115-113 for Heaney with a couple of swing rounds, so it could have been wider. I think a draw is pushing it a bit, but do you know what? Um, Brad Paul's tried, he tried his heart out. And it, it's both orthodox fighters. Heaney's 34, Paul's is 30. Paul's, I think, fought for the British title previously and lost to Tyler Denny. Um, and or was that for the English title? I think that, actually, no, I think that was for the English title. I think this was his first shot at the the, the British middleweight title, like the full, the, the, you know, the British title. But he did, having lost to Tyler Denny, which was a unanimous 10-round decision, Brad Pauls did pick up the English, the vacant English title against Mitchell Frearson. And that was, it. that was actually, I think, his last fight. He stopped him in eight rounds. Look, Pauls came in with 18 wins, 10 KOs, probably hits harder than that statistic suggests. He's got the one defeat, which was to Denny. And he's a curious, he's a curious watch because whenever I've seen him in the past, I mean, I watched the Denny fight. I don't know whether it's because he starts slowly or whether he, he has to have a few rounds for his confidence to build. Um, because early on in this fight, I mean, Heaney was the one doing all the sort of movement, being far busier. With Nathan Heaney, you know he's going to be a difficult man to outwork because he he does work extremely hard. He fires lots of punches. Um People say, oh, he's an overachiever. He's actually got some very decent abilities, uh, Nathan Heaney. Fires, you know, nice jabs, d um, uses feet very well, uh, fires combinations, likes to have the last the last word, likes to be first. Um, defensively, he's a little bit slack, perhaps a little bit upright at times. Um, he looked to me like the taller man against uh, Brad Pauls, I think maybe a couple of inches taller perhaps. Um, and Paul's started quite slowly, and he, Healy, um, uh, Nathan Healy was winning the, the first few rounds, I, I thought anyway. But then Brad Paul started to come into it a little bit. He's, it's almost like he he started to time him very well. The thing about Brad Paul's is he doesn't do anything spectacularly. He fires good single jabs, and he, he's very good at timing counters. Um, and he started to really time Heaney, and I think it might have been the fourth round, third or fourth round. Um, I don't know whether there's enough to win him that round or the round I'm thinking of it which I think was the third or fourth but it, you've got the feeling okay he's, he's settling in he's warming into it um, and the fight progressed and then gradually Pauls was creeping into it and then I, th I can't remember it was the seventh or eighth it was one of the middle rounds suddenly he clips Heaney and Heaney really feels feels it he feels it he's not you know he's moving he's, again he's quite upright so he sort of sways and he's he looks very sort of ungainly at times and gangly, but he looked maybe not hurt, but sort of a little bit buzzed. And Paul's poured it on him. Paul's just poured it on him. And it was the first round, this one of his middle rounds, maybe the seventh or eighth, that where you thought, okay, Paul's is, yeah. I mean, that that's by far his best round. Was it the seventh or was it the sixth? It was one of those middle rounds. You're thinking, okay, now he can build on this. But in fairness to Heaney, he went back to, um, you know, Varied his punches very well. Yeah, again, Nathan Heaney. You know, he, uh, they say he's an overachiever, but he's he's no. There's nothing crude about the guy. He's actually quite well schooled, uh, and he was again. He was just 
busier than Paul's and he was pinching rounds. Again, there were a few swing rounds, but I felt that Heaney's sort of industry was was getting the better the better of Paul's, even though Paul's, when he did land, looked to have more of an effect on Heaney than when Heaney landed on, on Brad Paul's. Um, but the thing was, though, that I think the question was, you know, who's who's going to last the distance here? Because it got to the point where this was becoming really gruelling. And when the fight was two thirds over, I mean, going into the ninth round, um, you got the feeling, OK, this this might be who's got the uh, the bigger gas tank. And you could see they were both tired. Um, certainly, there was some. I think it was, Heaney had bl- a bloody nose, possibly blood coming out of his mouth. There were some abrasions around Brad Paul's eyes. Um, it just looked to me like possibly Paul's was coming on strong. And certainly, um, in the eleventh round, he gave Heaney by far the worst round of the fight. I mean, how Heaney stayed on his feet, I don't know, because Paul's was ragdolling him and firing enormous salvos of punches that were accurate. Heaney was, you know, swaying and like a sort of, you know, like grass in the wind or a reed in the wind, you know, bending but not snapping. Um, But I thought, you know, this is going to be a hellacious final round because... Could you could you have made an argument for giving Brad Pauls a ten eight in that eleventh round, even though Heaney didn't didn't hit the floor? Maybe, maybe. Um, and it seemed to me that Heaney didn't have one thing. Heaney lacks is is power. I mean, he's only got six KOs out of eighteen wins. Um, whereas, like I say, Brad Pauls is even though he's got ten out of ten out was it ten out of eighteen? I think he's got eighteen wins and. 10 KOs, he probably has got heavier hands than that statistic indicates. And I, I thought, you know, if Pauls hasn't shot his bolt and isn't, hasn't gassed himself out in this 12th round, he's got to lay it on thick. He's, and he, he can knock out Heaney here. Now, there was a little cameo in the final round, just a little, a little snippet where Pauls managed to land a huge left hook that swayed Heaney right back. And you thought, oh, is he going to hit the floor? And Heaney, almost as he was moving backwards, threw a left hook, which which caught Paul's. And it was that type of fight. You know, just when you thought one guy was, was going on top, the other guy would just about do enough to claw his way back. Definitely the rounds that Paul's won, he won bigger. Uh, or should I say, they were more hurtful rounds. Whereas certainly some of the early rounds, Heaney clearly won them on industry. At no point did he really sting Brad Paul's. I felt that the one the one who was hurt the most... There was probably some exhaustion there as well, but the one that was the one that clearly had the heavier hands was Brad Pauls, and the one the one that was hurting the most was was Nathan Heaney. A draw pushing it for me. I still think Heaney pinched enough rounds to win, but maybe maybe if I watched it back, I would think well, actually, no, maybe 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 I would give a ten eight to Pauls, and you know what I mean. But it was a. It's one of those fights where you think, okay, it's a draw. Let's have a rematch. And they both. I mean, certainly Brad Pauls deserves a rematch. He's earned it. Um, Nathan Heaney in the post-fight interview was saying, "Oh, I'm very disappointed. I want to win. I don't want to draw." Well, quite simply, there's a solution to that. Let's do it again. And I would certainly want to watch that again because this was an entertaining fight. Like I say, it wasn't a sort of stone cold classic because it took some rounds to get into it. But at the same time, by the end of it, you thought you you thought, oh yeah, we've watched a good thirty six minutes of boxing there. A really, that was really entertaining. And again, another one for the the history books of the of the British title. This was for the British middleweight title. But whatever division you're in, if you look at the British title fights, so many of them are just brilliant, really, really good fun, really, really entertaining. So, did you see this fight? It headlined the magnificent seven ride again. Um, Tell me what you think. Tell me who you thought won. Do you think a draw was a fair result? Um, at the end of the fight, I was thinking I'd rather be Brad Pauls and Nathan Heaney, but at the same time, that's not to say that Heaney didn't pinch it. I did have him ahead, 115, 113. But tell me what you think. Leave your comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Please do. And hit the like button. I always appreciate your time. I know you've got a thousand things you could be doing. Instead, you're watching this video. So uh, big up, big up you, big up, big, in fact, big up the channel, spread the word about Joe's son of boxing. I'll catch you later and bye for now.